So today we're going to be talking about Maine educational assessments and assessment security. Again, we're the Maine Department of Education assessment team, and I'm going to pass it over to Gina. Why does assessment security matter? So, uh, assessment because assessment results are used to make educational decisions at local, state, and federal levels. It makes it highly important that every the results are accurate and the, a fair administration of the assessment has been conducted ac across the state in every classroom, right? So these results need to be valid and reliable for us to do not only com comparability or comparability, but to also understand what the next steps are um, for our students. So it, they inform policy and as well as practice. Assessment security ensures the uniformity of the administration, the validity of the results, and the accuracy of the measure. And uh, for example, a, a leaking of a question can lead to unfair advantages for students. Um, so student discussion can promote, you know, that kind of situation. And we want all of our students to have equal as well as equitable you know, access to our assessments. Let's see if I can get this. Oops, there we go. All right, so our, uh, we have multiple resources on uh, the main DOE website, our assessment for our assessment team, which is going, is becoming more easy to locate with fewer steps, which I'm very happy to say. So you'll notice that we have an assessment security handbook. Uh, we don't believe that everybody should review that, but especially at your level and the uh, school coordinator level, we need, um, they are highly important. We have assessment specific administration manuals, uh, training materials, and a couple of security webisodes to share during your local trainings with proctors and assessment coordinators. So those of we and we um there is a link available. I don't know if we can drop it in the chat or not, but um you'll also find our three year assessment proctor video in uh, uh at that site. And we'll move on to prevention of assessment irregularities. Thanks, Gina. And just to let everyone know, I got some feedback that my audio has been a bit interrupted. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off my camera. So our primary focus for the conversation today is going to be on irregularities, beginning with strategies for preventing assessment irregularities. We're going to consider factors around environment, scheduling, and student preparation for the main assessments. So first, let's establish a common understanding of what we mean when we say an assessment irregularity. An irregularity is anything that happens during assessment that is not consistent with established protocol, whether intentional or not. Here are just a few examples of some of the more common irregularities, which are reported to us year after year. But there are really endless possibilities of what can cause an assessment irregularity, and we hear new ones every year. So it's important to understand not only some proactive steps that can be taken that will hopefully limit an occurrence of an irregularity, but also what to do in the event of an irregularity and how the main DOE assessment team can support. Some of the ideas included here may seem obvious to many of you um, who are experienced in the terms of being assessment coordinators at the district or school level. Believe it or not, we're including them because these are some of the sources of reported irregularities nearly every year. One big consideration is developing a system or common practice for ensuring that students are not accessing their personal devices during the assessment. That's a big one. I also wanna pause a moment to reflect on the first consideration that we have here, which is a distraction-free environment. We're speaking here about an environment where the assessment schedule is shared transparently 
and all members of the school community, whether educators, administrators, service providers, and students are aware of their role in limiting interruptions to the assessment experience for all students. While we're talking about this, I also want to encourage you to think not only of the general assessments, but also those for special populations. That can present a unique challenge because it can be challenging to find a separate and appropriate space for one student or a small group of students to participate in, say, an alternate assessment or an ELP assessment. However, it's no less important than securing a space for Maine through year or for Maine science. Many of us have worked as ESOL coordinators and school administrators or special educators. We've had to assess in spaces possibly such as the landing in the stairwell or a closet at the back at the back of another teacher's classroom. These are real experiences. Um, I've also been a test administrator where other colleagues came into the assessment space, which caused an interruption to the student's focus and to their experience. Would these potentially communicate to our students participating um, in alternate or ELP assessments or any assessment where there are frequent interruptions or distractions? is that the assessment they are participating in is not valued or not important. So moving on to scheduling. Scheduling is a really important part of mitigating irregularities, in particular ensuring that the assessment schedule for all assessments is transparent to the school community. This includes not only students and fellow educators, but also families, administrators, and SAU level colleagues. It's extremely important to prepare students as much as possible for a positive assessment experience. This starts obviously with the instruction of the student, but it also gets to what our team refers to as a culture of assessment. What are the opportunities that the students have through language, time, modeling, routines, and expectations associated with the state assessments? Is it framed for students and the school community in a positive way? Do they understand what assessment results are or are not used for? Another strategy for preparing students is to have a plan in place for students to interact with sample items be they called sample items or item type samplers in the case of main through year. Regardless of what they're called, students interacting with these items allows them to become more familiar with the types of items they will see on the operational assessment, as well as the modality of the assessment, whether it's a paper-based form or an online platform, as well as any accessibility features that may be appropriate and applicable for them during the operational administration. So these are just a few considerations when we're thinking about how to maximize a positive experience for students. As assessment coordinators, you are ultimately responsible for the security of assessment materials while they are in your school building or SAU. To achieve valid and comparable state assessment results, students must have no prior exposure to the items on the assessment. It is critical that all staff who have access to assessment materials protect the assessment from exposure at all times. Under no circumstance should anyone have access to assessment materials other than trained school personnel designated to be directly involved with administration. Duplication of assessment materials is prohibited. Duplication includes, but is not limited to, audio taping, videotaping, photographing, photocopying, and handwritten copying. Students may not have access to phones, cameras, or online devices other than the device used for the assessment. In addition, no paper version of an assessment or student work, including any record of computer-generated responses, may be retained. When using paper-based assessment materials, please monitor the distribution and use of these materials as well as secure assessment materials in a secure location. All manuals and guides, including the administration manuals, are not secure materials and may be discarded after the administration has concluded. 
After review of all test security and privacy protocols, assessment coordinators and proctors must sign an assessment security and data privacy agreement and return it to the district assessment coordinator or school assessment coordinator. You do not need to send these agreements to the main department of education. The agreement attests that you have read the appropriate manuals and viewed the applicable webinars. So assessment coordinators are required to view this training. All proctors of main educational assessments are required to watch the two assessment security webinars on our website. Proctors do not need to watch this recording. And proctors of the three-year assessment are required to watch an additional proctor training video that contains both security-related information and practical proctoring information. In addition, the agreement attests that you agree to follow all assessment security policies and agree to report any potential irregularities. The security and data privacy agreement can be downloaded and signed by hand or electronically. There are separate agreements this year for assessment coordinators and proctors, and they're found in appendices E and F of the assessment security handbook. And the assessment security handbook can be found at the link provided on this slide. And these slides will be shared on our website. Certain documentation of an assessment administration must be maintained for one year. Documents may be maintained at the district or individual school levels with the district assessment coordinators or the school assessment coordinators. Administration documents that must be maintained include training materials and personnel training sign-in sheets, the assessment security and data privacy agreements and or non-disclosure forms. If you are using assessment schedules and seating charts and recording those, please keep those as well. And then any packing lists and shipping records of any paper-based materials. Very good. Now we're on to the detection of irregularities. And these are steps to be taken at both the state and local level to monitor assessment administration uh, and to detect or no notice or and report any irregularities that may threaten the validity of the results. If you're not sure, report it. We have anonymous uh, tip lines. I'll show you uh, an uh, anonymous tip link that'll refer to later, but also um, just reach out and we, can, and we can help you make those decisions. If you suspect a potential irregularity has occurred, you should contact the school assessment coordinator immediately. This is especially important for any irregularities that involve a breach of item security as mentioned, right? Um, lead to, because they could lead to assessment invalidation. Uh, they might involve student misconduct or educator misconduct. And those are pretty broad categories. So um, don't be afraid. You know, we're ha we're here to help and, and consult. To report assessment irregularities, you should contact the uh, respective or appropriate state coordinator. Each assessment may have its own process for reporting irregularities. The school assessment coordinator and, the, and or the administrator should report irregularities according to the respective service center or help desk for each individual assessment. In many cases, the state assessment coordinator um, or the help desk will provide instructions that will enable immediate resolution of the irregularity, such as unlocking or resetting the test session. Uh, for more complex irregularities, the state assessment coordinator will contact the district assessment coordinator or the principal or test, school test coordinator and possibly initiate an investigation of the irregularity to determine the most appropriate resolution. Occasionally, there will be other parties with concerns about a particular assessment practice. Students might discuss concerns with their parents. Other educators might observe questionable practices. To capture information from all these available resources about these about potential irregularities, the Maine Dewey has our anonymous um, MEA tip link, and that's it. Here's the location on our website, and you see the button. And this is what I referred to earlier. Again, we don't collect the contact information, so. Um, 
Any reports should be made completely with as many details as possible because we do not have the ability to follow up on this sort of tip. It's a, it is critical that the information be complete about this the concern. Without actionable information, no action can be taken. The main DOE encourages DACs and school test coordinators to monitor, observe, and observe the administration of assessments to ensure security and consistency in administration. Sample monitoring observation forms and additional guidance are in the assessment security handbook. We also have electronic uh, copies of these that are available for your use. Next, we'll be looking at investigation and resolution of irregularities. So investigation of irregularities will outline the steps to be taken by the local SAU in collaboration with the main Department of Education to understand the incident and its implications. And then resolution of irregularities is working with Maine DOE to optimally resolve irregularities and to ensure, you can go back, Dr. G, to ensure valid results for all students. So if it is determined that an investigation is warranted, the appropriate state assessment coordinator will immediately contact the district assessment coordinator about the reported incident. The state assessment coordinator will communicate with the appropriate district and school administrators throughout the investigation process. So when we're investigating irregularities, there are three overarching questions. Did the irregularity lead to a breach of item security? Did a misadministration affect the validity of any student performance and resulting scores? And was the irregularity deliberate? So is there evidence of academic fraud? The protocol for investigating irregularities can be found in the assessment security handbook. Next slide, please. Resolving irregularities is a good faith partnership between SAUs and the main DOE. Corrective actions aim to minimize the immediate damage and take action to prevent future testing irregularities. There are five steps in the resolution of irregularities. The first is determination. So based on the evidence collected, the main DOE review team will reach a determination based on the findings, such as no irregularity, irregularity resolved, breach of item security, invalid assessment administration, student misconduct, or proctor misconduct. Corrective action occurs once a determination has been made and the main DOE will prescribe or recommend that corrective action to the SAU. The third step is school decision. The school may accept the remediation or request an appeal. If an appeal is requested, the main DOE will assign an independent review panel to review the case. The panel's report will be sent to the main DOE by an independent review panel and the main commissioner of education will notify the school and SAU of the final determination. And lastly, documentation. Actions are documented during all phases of investigations and will be reviewed annually by the main DOE assessment team. Failure to comply with security requirements may result in one or more of the following. A delay in reporting of student school or SAU results, invalidation of student school or SAU results, and investigation by the Department of Education for possible staff certification action. 